Hi everyone, welcome to another Valheim tutorial. I'm Stone Prophet. Today we're going to go over the world edit commands, and I'm going to show you physical examples of each command. Some of them don't necessarily require an example. Some of them are also repeats of other commands in a different way. These I'm either going to skip or not spend a lot of time on. Now you also may be wondering, why am I sitting at this strange new menu screen? Well, that's part of a new mod from Azumath called Change of Scenery. It basically changes the scenery of the menu screens, character select, save game loading screens. It also gives you full control over the placement of the camera for each position. So if I go over to the menu here and I push start, it's gonna bring me, pull me back to a different location. There's the campfire, there's my character. Now if I wanna start a game, it switches the character facing out. Yeah, it's pretty simple, but it's nice. So you can actually change these in real time. So I can type in 45 and just save the file and then boom. It's gonna move it over there. It's pretty cool. That's not what I'm here to show you. And so the commands that we're gonna be working with today are here on the documentation of the world edit commands. That's linked from the Thunderstore mod page. Again, you go to Thunderstore, you look up world edit commands. Right here, world edit commands. Documentation is right here. Click on that. It's going to bring you to this screen. This is uh, something I had set up specifically for this video to show all of these commands very easily for you. Here's my guy. Right now I'm running with a lot of other mods just because I thought it would be fun and because there's a lot of other fun things to play with. Here is a list of mods I'm currently running. There is a lot of them. I'm showing you the dependency strings, which is all of the mods listed and their version numbers. I will scroll down once now. You can pause and take a look at it if you're interested. Here's the bottom of the list. Okay, getting back to it. Ammo and ammo type are the first couple commands. Ammo number that sets the ammo number for turrets. Here's a turret. The ammo is at 31 out of 40. If I just type in object, ammo equals 40 watch it change there you go that's what that command does then the ammo type so if i knew the id for some of the prefabs of the magic weapons i could just type in ammo type and then change it to that ammo type but i'm not going to do that because i tried to and i don't know the prefabs but that's what it would do angle equals degrees this is for when you're using the rectangle command to try and select things or denote some sort of uh, area of effect. Something I'm not gonna try and duplicate now because I, I use with the terrain commands later. Uh, baby, this prevents offspring from growing up. So, uh, hi, Graylings. Sorry, gotta go. Wolf cub here, and I wanted it to stay a wolf cub forever. I would hover over it and type in object baby. Wolf cub growth disabled. This will always be a wolf cub forever and ever. That's what that command does. Copy. Copies most of the ZDO data. If you watch my other video, this is the data that can be changed by some of the other mods like spawner tweaks and structure tweaks. That's the data that this is copying. That's the type of data this is copying. <clears throat> so I hover over this object and type object copy. That's the data for that object that I've just made. It'll copy it to the clipboard. So if I paste it in something else, again, if you watch my other videos of talking about making a spawner with spawner tweaks, you know that this data can just be put in, in certain spots. That's what that command does. Uh, copy all, it just copies all of the, data, of the data. When you do copy, it just copies most of it. It says to work some data to work better and redu reduce data size. Center, this centers the point at the player's rotation. So if I were doing some sort of rotation command about placing items or spawning items or adjusting the terrain, I would hover over this object and type in object center. And then I would continue typing commands and then, you know, yeah, missing the operation. So I would have to continue typing in other commands after that, like spawn a block, you know, rotated this many degrees. And then it would use that as the center point instead of me player as the center point. That's what that command does. Center X, Z, Y. This is the same thing, except you're just putting in specific things for the location. Wolf Cub, you gotta go. Chance. 
When you use a random integer or uh, basically a random variable, then this is the percentage of chance that that is to happen. If I wanted to rotate every single one of these pieces, I haven't gotten this command yet, but object, ro object connect, rotate um, one, 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 chance equals, uh, well, it would be 0.5%. So it basically gave everything a 50% chance that's connected to that to rotate one degree in all directions. And that's what it did. That's what that command does. And these all work with the undo system. So I can just click my undo button. Creator, that's just changing the player, the creator ID of a piece. So if I go object info, that's the creator ID is me. If I wanted to change it to another player or zero, I could just type in object creator equals zero. And then there's no creator for this now. That only affects uh, AI interaction, I think. Um, and maybe some other mods, not sure. Circle, number, circle, min, max. That's just for so selecting objects. This works the same way with terrain, that's just your radius. Uh, connect, that's connecting the entire structure. I just demonstrated that. Damage, damage, uh, sets a damage multiplier. So if you have something that's inflicting damage, like the ballista or I guess a creature, um, you could also modify its damage that way. A lot of these commands are repeated again in the spawn command. So we're not going to go over them down there. We're just going to go over them all here first. Data, that prints the data or the same way uh, copy does, it just kind of prints it. Same thing with data key value. Durability or health, that's for items, structures, creatures. You can multiply it, make it invincible. Yeah, gravity for structures. So if you have a piece that normally would fall to the ground because there's nothing connected to it, this would negate that. But if you have, I have structural integrity turned off in this game. Fuel. So if you were dealing with a smelter or a blast furnace, let's see, fuel, I'll just show you. There's the coal, there's no fuel. I would just type in object fuel equals 20 and boom. Now there's 20 fuel in there. That's what that command does. From, it's the same as center. You're just changing the position. A lot of this is gonna be used more for the terrain commands and not necessarily for the object or spawn commands. This is just a little elevator, you know, just an elevator. <sighs> anyway, height, that's just another center point. You're, you're just, you're just changing the center points when you're talking about placing objects or spawning objects at a certain height. That's what that is. ID, that's just listing the number of IDs, prefab IDs or whatever. It's just listing prefab IDs. Ignore, that's the same thing. You're just taking ignore. So if you say, I want to affect all the objects in a radius, except for, that's when you would put ignore. So if I was gonna do object move equals one, 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 radius equals 50, you could see I just moved everything one within a radius of 50, right? But if I do, if I repeat that command, ignore wood wall, then all of a sudden now I've excluded the wood wall items from the command that I just did. Object info, prints the info of the object you're hovering over. Level, that's for creatures. So if I do hammer grayling, gray dwarf, whatever, and I go over to it and I say object level, equals three, now it's a two-star gray dwarf. That's what that command does. Move, I just showed you that command. Origin, that's for move and rotate. So if you're rotating, you know, it's based off of your position, but if you want it to be a different position, then you would put in origin, player, object, world. If it's the world, then it's the center point of the world. If it's an object, then it's an object that you denote or you're hovering over. If it's a player, that's you. Prefab, it literally just changes one thing to another. So if I just go over to this wall and type in object, let's see, object, and type in object, prefab, uh, gray dwarf, 
I've now changed that piece of wall into a gray dwarf. That's what that command does. Radius, number, min, max. I've just demonstrated that earlier by selecting all the areas by just typing in radius and then putting in a number. Scale, this is just the scale of an object. So you can just change the scale of an object. So if I have this block here, okay, and I wanna change it in a weird way, I would just type in object scale equals uh, 2.4, 6.3, 4.1. Now we've made a giant weird looking block. And I can actually duplicate that with the infinity hammer. Now I've got a whole bunch of these weird looking blocks. Sleep. This will make creatures fall asleep. So if you have a creature that can sleep, I think, uh, what would fall asleep? Uh, object. Sleep. Oh, I've got it set to boars. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. I can't firing anyway object sleep or made to sleep so it's put that thing to sleep stars that just changes the amount of stars so if i do object stars and then do 10 now it's a giant and star boar look out it's coming for you payback time for the bacon status uh that adds a status effect so there i guess not save the file so if I come over here, object status, and let's see what the autocomplete says. Oh yeah, burning. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, and I guess it doesn't undo the status effects. <laughs> so that or is toast. Bacon anyone? Okay, pipe. Creature, chest, fireplace, only selects... Okay, so it only selects creatures or structures. It's selecting certain types of items. Um, so oh, if you select only creatures, uh, only chests, only spawners, that's what that would do. Wild would untame a creature. So if you have a tamed boar, tame the boar. And then if I wanted to do untame that boar, object wild. Now it's no longer tamed. That's what that command does. Bye, boy. So those are the object commands. So down here, there are additional style parameters. Now this is for basically changing a creature to have different items on their legs or chest or different parts of different creatures. But as soon as they start attacking, it changes. So it's kind of like basically uh, window dressing and goes away. So I've never really tried to do this. I'm sure it's absolutely possible, but it's not something that I've been interested in because other mods are capable of doing uh, adding creatures or different variants of NPCs that are interactable. Video to come soon. So in some of the examples that he's given here at the bottom, we've got some object move things. He's got using a radius here, changes it to a wolf. We did that with a gray dwarf. Some rotation things. These are alias commands. If you use the alias command, programming the system to remember a shortcut for you. So an alias remove that would be the name of the alias and then object remove ID is the command. So you're you're giving it a one word prompt instead of having to type in object remove blank. You just type in remove and then whatever you want to remove. It just shortens the amount of typing you have to do. So down here in spawn objects, so we've got a lot of the same commands. Ammo, we did that already. Amount, now that's just the amount of spawned items. This is important to remember. We have just object space and then the command. Here we have spawn object. So this is the command we have to do, spawn object. That's what we're actually typing in, not object. We're doing spawn object. And then we do our all of these commands. So spawn object rock. Let's do one of the big like, yeah, rock four. And then we would type in other commands, scale 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, amount 50 radius equals 40. So now we've randomly spawned a bunch of rocks at a specific size. Now I could rotate them within a certain number of things, but that's what that amount does. Baby, we've shown that. Crafter, that is for tamed creatures. So if you needed to change the owner of a tamed creature. Damage, 
that just the, again the damage multiplier so if i had a wolf and i wanted to increase it give it a thousand you know damage every hit i could just change damage to that data that's again talking about the data save if you have a copied thing that you've made from spawner tweaks or whatever something else paste it there durability is just the health of the uh structure or creature from again that's going to be a command that we're going to use more in terrain hunt now this is a creature specific command so obviously if it's a if i do spawn object railing hunt true it's going to hunt it's going to constantly hunt for me so if i turn ghost off It's just gonna it's gonna hunt me no matter where I go. It will never stop coming for me when I'm in the area. It will always directly go after me. Uh, level, we've shown that. Position, again, that's just the player's position replacing it. If you're gonna do some sort of command, so spawn object, that position away from you. Radius, same thing. So these two are in reference to the player and rotation of the player. Not gonna use these too often. Usually just you wanna rotate the object itself. That would be the rotation command here. Scale, we've shown that. Stars, we know what that does. Tame, just taming things true or false. And then two, that's something again, used more in terrain, but also, you know, you could be spawning objects, you know, from a certain distance that you know away. Variant, this is just um, the style variant down here that I referred to earlier. So a lot of the same commands. Spawn object, I don't use that off that often. I will use these commands for certain things like rocks to make certain things random. Uh, spawn location. So if you watch my other videos about locations, these are the this is this part of the spawn location command in world edit. So it'd be spawn location or whatever. Dungeon seed that just uh, resets the seeds like a random. If you wanted a random dungeon seed, again these are positions rotations. All right, here we go. The terrain commands. This is something that you will use if you're interested in doing like more um, specific terrain modification. Like if you're really building like building a set piece for some sort of, you know, action scene for your server, this will do it. So angle degrees, this is when we're doing slopes and stuff like that. So that'll just change the angle. So for an example, so if I do terrain slope 20 meters angle, equals 160 180 and then you have to do a rectangle or a circle so a rectangle equals 10. bam so it takes my player position because i didn't change the position of myself uh it took my me as the center point and then it took a slope at 20 meters long at an angle of 180 degrees with a 10 meter size width so that's what that just did the so block check that's for um structures so it's basically if i wanted to do something to the terrain under here so if i wanted to lower the terrain around from me you know from here to there uh but i didn't want to touch the terrain under the house i would do terrain lower uh equals two rectangle equals rectangle equals 40 lock check equals on now i've lowered the terrain everywhere else but around these structures because it block checked them and said there's something there that's what that does circle same thing as rectangle it's a, just the shape of your radius diameter uh delta that's the difference in elevation so it just if you wanted to target something at a higher uh altitude for or, you know specifically target that altitude for a number of reasons Delta would be what you want to use. The from commands and to commands also have altitude variables in them. That's the Y value. Uh, ID, again, this is just listing IDs. Ignore, same thing. You're going to ignore a certain number of IDs. Level, so this is the height you want to level at. Let's see, if I just raise the terrain using the infinity hammer ho command and I wanted to do, what was it? Level. At this level, I would do terrain level equals a little bit higher. So what am I at? You can see in the upper right hand corner where you are, that's um, 39. So if I want to go to 45, I still need to do a circle or a rectangle. This time I'll do a circle and that's five. Bam. Now I've got a level terrain at 45 in a circle right there. So that's what that does. 
Uh, lower, that's the same thing. You're lowering, not raising. Same exact thing. Max min, that's the altitude. Offset, when you want to use the targeted position, you use your position, but I want to affect the terrain over there, not right in front of me. So if I do terrain, uh, lower equals five in a circle of five meters. Uh, offset, mm, we'll do it just forward 10. Zero, zero. All right, so that's where I'm facing. It's hard to know exactly which direction you're facing, but that's the way I'm facing. So if I had been facing over here, it would make it over there. Okay, if I'm facing over here, it'll do it where I'm facing. Now, again, facing, hard to figure out, but that's what that means. Unless I choose a different position, it's always going to do that. Uh, smooth. Now, this is for smoothing you can see how it's kind of like jaggedy edge there right so if i repeated this command and i did smooth equals 0 0.5 so it's between it's like one 0 0.5 um or zero so i'm gonna do 0 0.5 you can see it kind of smooth the edges a little bit now if i do smooth one right now it's kind of smoothed it even more so you can kind of just create cool little you know whatever's that's what that command does paint this is for what you want it to be so if you wanted to do this and then paint it autocomplete paint it paved so there you go now it's paved uh you don't want it paved you want it cultivated now it's cultivated at the bottom there and then you have just paint terrain paint equals offset equals 20, 0, 0. Let's see what happens. Okay. Uh, raise, we already did that. Rectangle, that's just changing the shape. Reset, that's just that's just resetting the terrain. Slope, so what I do sometimes if I, you know, because it's difficult to... Oops, buddy. Wow. It's difficult to, if you want to make like a raised plateau or something like that from scratch and there's no terrain to go off of in the sky, you need to kind of go up there and find the position, right? So if I'm, if you look at the top, I'm, uh, if you look at the top minimap, I'm 35 height wise. That's the Y axis. So if I go up to where I'm at now, uh, my position would be 90, negative 153, 61. Uh, what I really wish there was was a command to save my position in the clipboard just right now in terms of, you know, uh, X comma, X comma, X comma. That way I could go back in and input this. So if I go down here, terrain slope, if I do terrain slope 2 equals 90 minus 152, 60 or 76, circle equals 20. Right now I've made a, a slope to that point. Now, if I undo that, right, and change my position and do that again, look, it's making it to the same point, right? And the same size, but because my position is changing, it's changing the angle and depth and, sh and shape of the thing. So if I do this and then do rectangle 10 or five, right? Now I've got a path. Up to that point and i can go up to that point now and if i wanted to make it easy for myself take the hoe right choose level oops make small thing here maybe change my shape to a box and boom now i've got the ability to make this a little bit bigger now i can just start making my spot to build you know a cool castle or something like that right so now i'm now i'm just leveling the terrain out right it'll only work if i'm targeting terrain if i go off the terrain in valid placement so now if we just take a look at what i did right look at this that's pretty cool and then from there you just take your blueprint rune and you're like okay we want a church this stupid blueprint is So something like that. So that's what's possible with those commands. All right. 
We'll leave you, strange spike. All right, going back to the commands, step, that's just an offset based on the radius and slope. Just another way to kind of like change the end of a point um, or the location of a point. Two, we just kind of showed that. To and from, you could do from either way. Two, doesn't matter. It's just going in one direction or the other. Void, that removes the train surface. So, um, I actually never tried this, to be honest with you. Train void. That's not even coming up in autocomplete. Train voids equal equals five. Oh, <laughs> okay. It just makes a void in the world. Wow, look at that. <laughs> that's kind of cool, actually. Holy crap. Within, that's just affecting the range, the terrain range. There are good examples here for the terrain. So if you're looking for terrain examples, other than the ones I've just given, there are some here. So we got a pyramid. Um, I'll just do this, we'll go over the... Okay, so it's leveling the terrain. We're raising it up four in a four rectangle, so a four cube basically four by four cube and then smoothing it. So that basically creates the pyramid shape because it's a square and then you paint it paved. So that's what that is, right? So if I made that, if I made, if I raised it four in a, in a four or raised it 10, it would be just like a really big point, right? And if I put this back to five and change the rectangle to, 10, then it would be a much wider base, right? So those are, that's, that's those examples. Um, we did slopes. Here's a good example of the ho command. So if I wanted to do, and I showed this before, but this is, this is using now the slope command now that you're seeing it. So it won't reach all the way there, right? But if I wanted to make a slope up there, I would just point and click, right? So there we go. We know how to use that slope command with that tool and we know how to do it in the console and what command it actually does. So those are all the world edit commands and the examples for almost all the commands themselves. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. If it was helpful, that's great. Share it with your friends. Thanks for watching. In the next video, I'm going to be covering spawner tweaks and structure tweaks. Those two mods are part of world edit and they're integrated in some of the coolest kind of things that you can do with them. Tune in next time.